right we're glad to have you back more condemnations are trailing the mindless killings of 100 persons over the weekend in plateau state the senate president bokola saraki who expressed shock over the killings says that the massacre shows nigeria is not safe Saraki advised the president to uh, direct his security chiefs to immediately produce quick response measures aimed at tackling the spate of killings in the country. On his part, uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria said despite assurances by President Buhari that his government was committed to the safety of lives and properties, Nigerians were being killed needlessly. And the group has queried the competence of the DSS and other security agencies. Meanwhile, a human rights lawyer, Femi Falano, has written Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State demanding the arrest and prosecution of the killers of 86, well, now the numbers of course have changed to 135 uh, unarmed yes. persons in the state. Also, the Northern Social Political Group, the Arewa Consultative Forum, has described as inhuman and callous the killings by herdsmen at suspected herdsmen. The group appeals to all aggrieved persons to always channel their grievances through due process to the law rather than uh, take law into their own hands. Let's now uh, bring in uh, all right. Uh, the police say that a death toll in the deadly attack on villages in Plateau State uh, uh, has now risen to 100, but um, as the current position at the moment is now 135. Mm -hmm. And TVC News Plateau correspondent uh, Funom Joshua has more in this report. The role played by the Hausa communities during and after the attack is highly commended, says an eyewitness. The, the actual death. figure of dead people, apart from people that we've not even known their whereabouts, is 213. Where we did that uh, 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 mass massive burial was 67. If you go to Gindea Kwati, we have 37. If you go to uh, uh, Ruku, we have 30, we have 42. Uh, uh, at Shonong, we have a 11. One of the surviving victims who lost 14 members of his family, including wife and two kids, narrated his ordeal to us. He bought my mother, my other sister, my wife with two kids, my other brother's wife with two kids, my three kids with other people inside. So we are helpless. And I can identify people. In fact, they are my neighbors. They are living very close by. Among them, we have Babangida Shadari. When the incidents happened, they killed many people in our village. The number of people that they killed in our village are 71 people. Even when the leadership of the Biron Youth Molders Association had earlier accused the Joint Special Task Force of giving protection to some Fulani herdsmen following the declaration of the curfew by the state government. Uh, uh, vigilante in High Pan, to be precise, you know, as at about uh, 2 a.m., you know, uh, uh, made a distress call that uh, uh, an influx of herdsmen being accompanied by Nigerian military. We're moving from uh, Bisichi to FAS. Bisichi is under uh, Barikila, the local government. Whereas FAS is, an, is, is, is another settlement of Fulani hatemen under Jol community in Uriom, local government. So they were moving as at that hour. In short, it dawned on us that could it be that uh, 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 you know, military are actually colluding with these people even when a declaration of, you know, curfew has been officially made known to every individual. We spoke to the police public relations officer in the state, Matthias Chopev, on the number of those who lost their lives. But the details given to us by eyewitnesses seem different. The time I gave the figure as uh, 11 people, uh, that was the figure we got from the divisional police officer who was on ground. But after some time, the commissioner of police sent the search and rescue uh, team that was headed by assistant commissioner of police, John Eddy, uh, from the Department of Operations, uh, together with some other senior police officers, to go into the community, that is the entire district, from community to community, to know the exact uh, casualty figures. And uh, we discovered in the evening that the number uh, was not uh, 11, as earlier said, but the number is um, 86 persons. 86 persons lost their lives. 
Six people were injured, 50 houses burnt. Residents have been advised to remain calm and allow security operatives to get to the root of the matter. Funom Joshua, TVC News, Joss. All right, uh, our correspondent Fonom Joshua there. Of mm. course, uh, several figures, you know, yeah. you know, brandished. Mm -hmm. um, According to what an eyewitness they, there. Yes, uh, he, 213, he said. 213? Yes, and oh. then the police say um, 86. But, but let's now bring in uh, security expert and uh, consultant, Dennis Amakri. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let me start off by... Um, Quoting with the words of Thomas Jefferson when he once said that where injustice becomes a law, resistance mm -hmm. becomes a duty. Exactly. Isn't that what we're seeing in Plateau at the moment? Uh, in other words, that's what uh, General Danjuma was also saying. Mm. Because people's life are at stake and they don't have any protection. And under such a situation, they have to protect themselves. If you pursue a goat to a corner and he cannot get out again, he might just turn around and bite you, which is not out of which is out of his character. So, I think uh, the country itself is in a very bad situation right now. Um, the killings had continued oh. over the years, and. Um, something had to be done about it. What exactly can be done? There's been a fresh deployment of security forces, including the DIG uh, operations, to check this uh, marauding herdsmen. And that is in addition to the battalions and different uh, security agencies that have been on ground. Uh, some stakeholders actually uh, say they, they've been criticizing even the state gov governor, uh, Simon Lalong, of not engaging enough with the security agencies, you know, and all of that. How, how do you deal with this kind of situation? The situation is that we are very shoddy in dealing with this. The security agencies are running amok, which is not right. Hmm. When you look at it properly, there is oh. no plan. Yesterday, uh, the, or the day before when they were interviewing the uh, commissioner of police of uh, uh, Plateau State, yes. you can see that he does not have any plan. You know, it does not have any plan. He, well, he's been removed now. Yeah, well, he's been removed, but mm -hmm. that is not the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, has he been sacked or he has just been removed from mm -hmm. that position? Mm -hmm. You know, these are the problems. And um, we are not well organized. There is no security plan that takes care of this particular situation. What are the security people doing on a regular basis before mm -hmm. this happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and then the loss of life. And... The, the, the meaningless, uh, uh, should I say, um, the, 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 the value, non-value that we put on life is becoming terrible. Because right what? now, think mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. the, 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 number of, the number has been changing from uh, 11 to 89 to 135 to mm -hmm. 200 and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now, as a country, it is not just saying 200 people are dead. Even one person should be a problem for right. us. Mm -hmm. The life of a Nigerian should be very important for us mm. to think about. Now 200 people are dead. 35 people are dead. 100, 135. Who are these people? These are real human beings. Yeah, they are human one beings. Of, they are not the numbers. One of the respondents in that report yes. uh, by Funon Joshua, one person actually lost 14 members of his family. That's the point. So. Does the government have a list of those people who died? Mm. Or should I say NEMA? NEMA Emergency uh, Man Management, Man Man Agency Management Agency is there. Do they have a list of who died? How many people were killed? Mm. How many were injured? And what? then they hurry to bury them. That is, that is just, out, you know, tell you the value uh, that we put on life. All right, in, in the wake of, of all of this now, the president has said those responsible uh, and their sponsors would be brought to justice. But again, in the report by our correspondent, Fonam Joshua, um, of course, we read somewhere what someone said, look, the president had always come out to say, uh, I'm committed to security of lives and properties. But that doesn't seem to be what the case is at the moment. Do you believe the president's words? I don't believe that. Because these statements, we've heard these statements before. Mm. We've heard these statements from 
different uh, states, Benue State, Adamawa State, mm. and they are supposed to pursue these people. By now, I'm, I'm expecting to see arrests. A lot of people who have been arrested who are doing this, they are not spirits, and they are not from Libya. They are Nigerians who are there going from one place to the other, you know, um, uh, killing people. We cannot say that uh, um, when things like this happen, then we start deploying DIGs to the place and uh, sending helicopters. More there. reactive. Yeah, than we are uh, reactive. Proactive. We are not proactive mm. because after a while, those uh, helicopters are going to go away. Mm. But you would think, uh, Mr. Macri, that before these killers actually succeed in carrying out this um, heinous uh, crimes, that there would have been a planning stage. How is it that we're not able to break into the, you know, the, the planning process another, in the first place? That's mm -hmm. another fault we have with our intelligence system, you know, because we should be, by now, mm -hmm. we should be able to penetrate whichever group to get the information before it actually happens. Including the Mieti Allah that has said it, this was a reprisal attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because and, 300 and if, of our cows... Yes. If Mieti Allah had come out to say that, we should have agents in Mieti Allah who should have been able to tell the security agencies that this is what is being planned mm. and then nip it in the board. Mm. But it was allowed to happen. And when the man actually came out to say that this is a retaliatory attack, you don't arrest him. This guy should be answering some questions now. Mm. Because we cannot be seen. Government cannot be seen to be siding one uh, group or mm. the other. Mm. Because government is supposed to be very, very neutral. Positively neutral. Yes, positively neutral, because that is what government is supposed to do. The protection of life and property of the citizens of this country. And you remember, not too long ago, mm. there was intel from the US that, look, ISIS is trying to infiltrate in Nigeria. Yes. And um, that led to yeah, 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 and that yeah. led yeah. that led yeah, yeah. to uh, you know taking some measures at, at the airports and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So it does appear we do not have that kind of system where before things happen, we have the intelligence mm -hmm. and then uh, you know take proactive measures. Yes, that's that that does appear to be a problem. It is a problem. Um, uh, ISIS had been in Nigeria for a very long time. They some of them had been arrested by the DSS, mm -hmm. but. What we don't do, or why we, are we keeping these people locked up? The best thing is to bring them out, prosecute them, let everybody know mm. that this is the people that are causing problems, and if it is going to be a deterrent to others, to others. who are going to be around, I think it should happen. Well, going to the airport to put um, uh, CCTVs and all those kind of, I think is the wrong approach, you know, mm. because... The airport is, itself is filled up with all kinds of security people. You know. well, well, the president at the moment is also uh, giving it a political undertone. The killings in mm. Plateau and all of that. Do you think he could be right? I don't want the lives of Nigerians to be politicized. Mm. We cannot politicize this. As a security uh, uh, consultant, I don't see you know, going to advise people that this is for a political end or it is not for a political end. Mm -hmm. What we are concerned about is national security here. The lives of Nigerians are at stake. Let's even, even assume some that truly it, it has some political undertone where some people are trying to take advantage uh, to score some cheap uh, goal, especially as 2019 draws closer. And when you hear from the presidency, uh, and indeed the president himself, that we know those people, we know the, uh, the, the uh, sponsors of these, uh, you know, killers. That in itself says you, you know where to go get them and, you know, just pick them up and uh, lock them up or something. But this deployment of security, I, I need you to um, <laughs> address that. We've just deployed security forces to Plateau State mm -hmm. on one hand. Yes. And then President Buhari, oh my, I, I, I hate to have to say this over and over again, has said, I, there's nothing I can do other than to actually call for Nigerians to pray and other than for us to pray about this situation. That is, uh, if the president actually said that. 
Now. I don't believe that the president that, said it. Okay, let's hope if he, if he actually said that, then he has given up his presidency. He has given it up because that's his job. We are not going to be praying in situations like this. You know, when did 9-11 uh, happened in New York, mm. the president of the United States was there. And he didn't ask Americans to pray. Mm. He said, we are going to get these terrorists. Mm -hmm. Smoke them out of their yes, homes. Yes, wherever they are. Wherever they are. And they did. And today, if you go down to the World Trade Center, the former World Trade Center, mm -hmm. you will see the names of everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are saying. We are not going to pray when we don't even know the people of, that have died. We don't know their names. We don't know where they come from. And then those people who killed them have disappeared into thin air. They are not from Libya. Mm -hmm. They are Nigerians, so we should sort them out. You know, the police is there now in full force. They should start making arrests. And now the, the representative of the Metiel, uh, the, the chairman, oh, no, what is it? Um, um, what's his name again? Dan Ladi. Dan Ladi, Dan Ladi Ch Chiroma. Chiroma, yes. yeah. Chiroma. Uh, in one of his interviews, which uh, he came out yesterday to say, look, he was misquoted mm -hmm. and his words were taken out of context and all of that. But earlier, the reports were that he said about 300 cows uh, were missing. stolen. And where it's a, a situation where you have 300 cows stolen that you would not expect to have peace in, in, that, in that area. Uh, what do you make of this sort of statement? This kind of statement tells you that we are heading towards a lawless society. A lawless society where somebody will come out and own up for some crime like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, cattle rustling has been going on in Nigeria over the years. People, even there are Fulanese who are stealing cattle from their fellow for, uh, for a herdsman. Fellow. <laughs> yes, you know, and that has been a problem. Sometimes, you know, I remember when I was working in Taraba State, there are people who will uh, rustle the cow cows and take them all across the border into Cameroon. And sometimes they'll pursue them in there and then bring back the cows. So this had been going on. Mm. If somebody is stealing your cows, you should be able to report it. Security agencies should be on their toes to arrest those rustlers. You know, a question that I've asked um, a couple of um, security persons like yourself is, is there really more to this than meets the eye? Is this really just about herdsmen, you know, looking for uh, grazing land where to feed their cattle? Mm. You know, and unfortunately, the farmers are caught in the line of fire. Or is there more? Is this a deliberate attack at the heart of Nigeria's agriculture? Don't food, forget, food we've been baskets. told that by 2050, yeah. that uh, Nigeria could just be fa uh, facing um, famine. Yes. And it looks like everything is working in that direction to actually bring that about. Benue State is the, is, the, is the food basket of Nigeria, mm -hmm. Taraba and the rest of them. And then in Benue itself, Agatu is the main source of, I mean, is the core of farming in, in, in Benue State. Yes. So the, the, the heart of Nigeria's uh, survival, future survival, is what is being attacked. Yes. And we don't seem to be able to diagnose this. You know, it has been discussed in different fora, whereby many people are giving meanings to this. And mm. The meanings that are being given to this situation is because of the way government is handling it. Because government has not come out to show responsibility mm. and then to say that this is what is happening and we are nipping it in the bud. We are in charge. Mm. You know, when nothing happens, people are killed and the president says we should pray and everything, other people come up with their own manufactured stories. Including that it is ethnic cleansing and Of course, you know, because people like say, oh, it's ethnic cleansing. Mm. Oh, it is a Fulani domination uh, from 18, 1816, mm. Mm. you know, and all kinds of things. Yeah. All those kind of stories will come. And when you don't have, you know, I, I feel sorry for the president because when you look at it right now, He's in a position where he's a Fulani, and Fulani people are doing this. He might not be in support of them, but they are spoiling his name. He, he said mm. that much, uh, you know, in, in Plato. Exactly. That, uh, he's being accused of not doing anything exactly. because so he looks like them. That's the point. 
<laughs> you know, so they are spoiling his name. Yeah. And if they are doing this, I think the security people should wake up to it and make sure that they protect the image of the president by going after these people to show that they are not being supported by government. But if, you, if, if we also uh, put apart the comments by uh, Chiroma, the uh, representative of the Meetiella, yes. isn't that comment one that is capable of uh, throwing the entire area state into uh, anarchy, of so course. that so that he should be followed by the DSS, and then uh, you know ask questions. It's not a matter of following. He should be in the DSS as we talk now, mm. telling them what he really meant and what he knows about the plan mm. of what happened, because you cannot make statements like that ignorantly. You know, definitely he knows a lot about what happened. Mm -hmm. So he should tell us. And he should not be a sacred cow because it's not because uh, he's from the same tribe with the president so mm -hmm. he can say whatever he likes and go away with free uh, without being arrested or being interrogated about what actually happened. What signals are we sending out to the international uh, community? Of course, the U.S. has demanded trial of plateau killers. And that would, of course, mean that the people should be apprehended first off. of. But course. when, when uh, Senate President Bukola Saraki says, all of these killings give the impression that Nigeria is no longer safe, on the one hand, and the president has uh, accepted the fact uh, that uh, life is cheap in Nigeria, what yeah. are we telling the international community? We're telling the international community that we are heading towards a failed state, you know, because if you look at the things, the, the indices that describe a failed state, mm -hmm. this is what we are getting. You know, there's no law and order. Anybody can kill anybody anytime. Mm. The value put on life is zero. You know, and of course, the, the law enforcement people are not doing what they are supposed to do. Or the law enforcement people are overwhelmed. Mm. And if they are overwhelmed, then... The, 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 the National Assembly should come up with their bill. I don't know why they are still sitting on it for state police. Because if you have state police, these people should be able to police the environment, their local environment, and know what they're doing. Would it be state police that will solve this problem, or even co community policing? Community policing, yeah. neighborhood watch, watch. state police. Mm -hmm. These are things, these are people that uh, uh, know the local environment yes. mm. and they should be in fact the whole world is going that way mm -hmm. you know you go to even the united states as advanced as they are there are neighborhood watches mm -hmm. there are state community policing going on in fact right now you there is no federal police in the united states except the fbi, the FBI. Mm. you know you have the state police the tr state troopers you have the sheriff taking care of local government the counties areas, and what you know, and counties. So mm. that is the way to go. We cannot keep on holding to that colonial uh, uh, approach. Uh, yeah, they are structured that they left with us and then continue to do it. Even the police knows that they cannot handle this situation mm. very well. No, but again, as a security expert, I'm just trying to think. In an area, this is this is not an area that is completely devoid of security apparatus, and then you wonder how this sort of heinous act would take place. Where about a hundred or more people were killed Our without accounts. any resistance? Yes, from security agents. That's what I'm saying. We are not well policed. Mm. It has been happening in this country. Chibo girls. Chibo girls, we, they went down there and picked up 200 and something. The only thing is that they didn't kill them, otherwise we'll have the same dead, the dead rate, the number that we have now. They were cleanly, cleanly mm. took out of their school. Mm. Dapchi, the same thing. Yeah. So you find out that anytime these people make their incursions and do certain criminal acts or violence, the security people are caught unawares because they are spread too thin. Mm -hmm. What happened in Plateau State is a very good example. They are spread out in 11 local governments and they don't have that capacity 
Okay, so and, what and is the, the president way talked yeah. about uh, recruiting about six thousand approved. Uh, uh, well, re recruiting uh, six thousand no police officers. Do you think that we uh, cannot <laughs> continue feeding the old system that is not working? Mm. Uh, we we'll cannot keep on with that old system. They have to collapse it, bring out a new structure, mm. a new structure. And what, what structure, I, I, I what mean, structure would you would you recommend? Uh, uh, propose. I have said it. Mm. We need state police. Mm -hmm. Let the federal police do their job. The federal police, like I should say, the SSS mm. should be like a federal police. Even this, the, 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 the office of the inspector general right now should be dissolved into something else. We should have state police where there is, if you want to call them commissioner of police or whatever you want to call them, mm. Mm. there should be sheriffs who are responsible for local governments mm, counties, if you like. and counties. In fact, in the United States, universities have their own police. Mm. Universities have their own police. So you, the policing system has is, to be expanded. Yes, it's, it's supposed to cover the community because you find out that all of them have their little jurisdictions where they now police it effectively. So now that the government has come up with this pilot scheme, the ranches, uh, because we heard early this year, the, the agri minister, Audubon, said that if we don't go the way of ranches, this hurts men, farmers' clashes will continue, if not get worse, by 2019. There's a pilot scheme in 10 states, and uh, over 90 uh, ranches uh, to be set up. Yeah, if a few of the states are saying, no, we don't, we're not ready to cede any ground for ranches. Do you think the ranches will, um, at least to a very uh, great extent, reduce these killings? I think, uh, you see, there are objections to, ranches are very good. Mm. Ranches are very good. That's what obtains in many yeah. countries. But I think um, there is an objection to it because of the modus operandi of how they want to do it, mm. you know. Ranches are personal businesses, and yeah, you can yes, you cannot take somebody's numbers. ancestral land or somebody's state land. You know, the, the, the land use decree says that lands belong to the state, mm. and the federal government cannot come and take a portion okay. of it and give it to somebody. All right, uh, Dennis Amarque is a security consultant. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank uh, you for having me. We really hope that this can be brought to an end so we don't wake up every morning to hear about these terrible headlines.